This is the second oldest existing colonial structure in Cape Town, the Slave Lodge. Built in 1679, it housed the slaves who belonged to the Dutch East India Company. Very little is known of the people who lived at the lodge, and only around half of their names were found, but nothing more than where they came from and their dates of death. Today the lodge is a museum that tells the story and commemorates the history of slavery in South Africa and further afield. Research on slavery, and especially the slave trade, is vital and is still lacking. A major discovery was however made in 2012 when the slave ship Sao Jose was identified, just beyond the crashing waves of one of Cape Town's most scenic beaches, Clifton. Marine archaeologist Jakub Bosov has been instrumental in the project. The vessel is the first identified slave wreck in South Africa. For over 200 years it lay hidden, slowly deteriorating, but finally its gruesome purpose was brought to light. More than 400 slaves en route from East Africa to Brazil were on board. When it was destroyed during a storm in 1794, it claimed the lives of more than 200 people. Hundreds of thousands of people were transported across the globe on vessels just like this, under horrendous conditions. They were packed in like cattle, probably sometimes even worse. They obviously tried to get as many people in on a ship for profit's sake. In fact, some of the captains um, uh, worked in an, a, a percentage of loss. In other words, they realized that, that some of the people are going to die on the voyage and therefore they packed in as many as they could. You can just think a small, enclosed, dark space um, at sea. Um, you've never been to sea. Uh, you know, very, not very good food, no toilets. Um, terrible situation. The slave trade was a major global undertaking that changed the world forever. Realising how much of an influence it has had to South Africa and the history of South Africa, uh, slavery is the basis of apartheid to an extent. It's the basis of racism. Um, and, you know, to understand that properly, you need to understand slavery. Slaves were brought to the Cape from across the globe, including Africa, Sri Lanka and Malaysia. From the slave lodge at the bottom of Wales Street in Cape Town, one can see the colourful homes of the Burka. Slavery is at the core of its history. It is, among others, as a result of slavery, the birthplace of an entirely new language, Afrikaans, and is the cradle of Islam in South Africa. You need to have an identity so that you can stand tall and, more importantly, that you can sit as equals amongst others at the table. So if you don't know where you come from, you don't know which door to open or on which door to, lock, uh, to knock. So um, that is very, um, very important. Otherwise, uh, we will just become part of the global village and become invisible. The Oxford Dictionary describes a slave as, among others, a person who is the legal property of another that is bound to absolute obedience and a helpless victim of some dominating influence. At the Cape especially you had two types of, of slaves. You had the slaves that worked for the, the Dutch East India Company, so they were not necessarily traded, but then you had slaves that were sold to the uh, farmers, um, and um, they were sold f uh, at various times for different sums of money, but what happened was the farmers or the, the slave owners who had slaves could then um, hire out their slaves, especially if they were skilled. If you had a slave that was a blacksmith, you could hire him out and make money out of him. The slave didn't get anything, but the owner did. So um, they were regarded as property, um, and therefore you could do with your property as you pleased. Today still, slavery's legacy continues. The 170 years of slave labour system was between slave master and, and slaves. Then, with the emancipation of slavery, that legacy continued right up to the day because immediately after the emancipation of slavery, an act was brought into power, uh, an act which was the Master Servants Act, and that shaped the labor relations of, of South Africa 
uh, which is always contested between the employer and the employee. Migrations from all over the world, including slavery, have made up the complex tapestry that is the South African people today. That melting pot today is providing all the layers of South African history. So when President Mandela was talking about the Rainbow Nation, he unwittingly put the focus on the forgotten history of South Africa, these various layers of history. Work on the Sao Jose slave wreck project continues. This in an effort to remember and honor those who died, but also those who survived, eventually sold as slaves at the Cape and whose descendants became part of the story of a nation. Mariska Boeta, SABC News, Cape Town.